Mark, how impressed were you with the way Bairstow batted, not just this morning, but also yesterday? Oh, he, was, he was absolutely fantastic. It was, um, it was a world-class performance yesterday, England at 48 for four when he came to the crease. Uh, they would have spoken very, very clearly, England, about the need to kind of to, to get yourself in on uh, West Indian pitches, to really do the hard yards in terms of your defence and your judgment early on in the innings. Johnny Bairstow did that by the time the West Indian bowlers had started to tire in the final session last night. He went straight into 50 over mode and really started to put them to the sword. Um, a stunning, stunning knock, you know, when you think that uh, his previous test match he made, what, 100 and 100 against Australia, plus 40 with a broken thumb, had to miss the last Ashes series. Um, he's starting to really cement a spot for himself as a specialist batsman in the top order. And I've thought for many, many years that he is one of England's best three or four batters in any format of the game. And hopefully that'll be, uh, that'll be him going up in terms of his batting average and, and really cementing that spot in the, in the top six. And that spot at six, do you think? Do you think that's his best position? Because well, I mean, he's been moved around a lot, yeah, hasn't he? I think it suits him, yeah, for sure. Because he, 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 does, he is able then to go out and, and play sort of the counter-attacking sort of knock. But, um, you know, listen, I, I'm, I'm a big fan. I think he's good enough to, to bat anywhere from, from three down to six. Um, and it might just be a case that it, it would be nice for him if he got a run, an extended run in one position so that he could really go about his business and, and start to make the sort of runs that his undoubted quality says he should. 311, do you think that's enough on this pitch? Um, they would have liked more. I mean, West Indies have had another good morning, haven't they? Um, and if the rest of the day pans out the way that yesterday's did, then England will be fine by the by the close of play. But but losing four wickets for, for 43 with, with a man um, starting the day on the 100 um, is perhaps a little bit disappointing. Uh, there wasn't anywhere near as much sort of sideways movement, even even though the ball was only six overs old when the West Indies started this morning. So uh, they'll be a, they'll be a tad disappointed about a, an opportunity missed to maybe extend things up to to 350. But hey, you know England hadn't made 300 in 13 attempts prior to this, so I suppose you uh, you have to be thankful for small mercies. And England's bowling attack, obviously without Stuart Broad, James Anderson, and Ollie Robinson, who's injured. Uh, were you surprised they opened with Craig Overton? Uh, yeah, I, th I thought they might go with Mark Wood, um, but having having decided to, to go that route with a, with a couple of um, you know a couple of line bowlers who, who should be able to run up and, and hold a really good disciplined line and length, they'd have been disappointed that the West Indies had got off to the sort of start where they're going at five runs and over. Um, you know, listen, don't underestimate. The, uh, the tension that is there for, for these guys. None of England's bowling attack average under 30 with the ball. They've got two of the best that England have ever had sat at home. They'll, they'd have been pumped up uh, trying to come out to prove that, uh, that they belong um, as sort of England's number one first choice um, bowling attack. And so they probably just tried a little bit too hard, went away from the basics of line and length a little bit too often in that session. Fortunately, test matches are long enough for you to be able to redeem yourself as England's batting lineup did yesterday. That decision to leave Broad and Anderson at home could be severely tested, couldn't it, here, if, if they don't take with it? Yeah, it could. I mean, listen, I, I fully expected that, uh, that, that James Anderson would, uh, would have this tour off. Um, that would have been that. That would have been the way I'd have played it. Jimmy's probably throwing things at the television at me right now. But you know, 39 years of age, keep him fresh for the summer. I would have brought Stuart Broad on this trip. Um, absolutely, no question about it. Um, his experience, his type of bowling here in the Caribbean, um, I would have thought would have been invaluable, and therefore that some of the the younger guys or the less experienced guys in England's bowling lineup would have had that sort of kingpin of the bowling attack to, to look up to. They haven't got that. That decision is over, it's done and dusted. It's up for these guys now to come out, put right what they did wrong in that first 10 overs and start to, to bowl with a bit better discipline and make inroads into this West Indies batting line. And away from here, the MCC has announced some law changes. The one that's got everyone talking is Mancad is now deemed a fair dismissal. Mancad, yeah. obviously, when you take the bails off at the non-strikers end when the batsman is out of his ground. Mm. What have you made of well, that? I, I don't really understand, to be honest with you, but you've always been able to be dismissed in that fashion. So whether people... You know, people can still think it's unfair that it's done, but now, but now there's supposed to be no stigma. The stigma won't go away if you do it. I mean, Stuart Broad himself has, has, has tweeted this morning that he would, he would never do it. He, he doesn't see it as part of the game. Other people see it completely differently. The facts of the matter are, Rule change or no rule change, you could still go run out backing up, right? Before and after. So nothing really has changed on that score. <laughs>